Jan Ozer here. In this tutorial, I'll walk you through the interface of the Livestream Studio Switcher software as running on the Studio HD51 hardware platform. I'm not going to cover all the functionality, just talk about the operational workflow and some of the key new features. Let's start with a quick tour of the relevant portions of the Studio interface. The HD51 has up to 13 switchable input channels, though I'm only using 8. I'm not using three of the five cameras or the two color bar inputs. You can input five HDMI or SDI cameras. I just have two, the front and side views. Next are the graphics tracks that contain titles and picture-in-picture -picture videos. You create titles by clicking the Add Text button, typing in the text, and configuring it. You add a picture-in-picture -picture with this control, Resize and position the frame. Then choose the camera. You can add images to a graphic with this control. Then resize and edit as desired. There are two media players that contain disc based content. This first is a screen cam based tutorial. Next is a video shot at Streaming Media West 2012. Studio can input any file that Media Player can play, but has to transcode all videos before including them in a production. You can cue your videos to the desired starting point and elect autoplay so they start playing when you take the feed live. You can play individual files or all the files in the playlist by clicking this button. New in Studio are two remote inputs. The first is pulling a PowerPoint screen from my HP Z1 all-in-one computer, which is located on the same local area network as the Studio HD51. The second is pulling a live Livestream feed from Livestream's Manhattan headquarters. It's obviously a cloudy day in the Big Apple. Note that both feeds contain audio and video. You control audio in the mixer down here. Okay, now let's talk about how you mix a live event with Studio. These two windows are the Preview and Program windows. To cue a video into the Preview window, just click it. To take it live, click the Cut or Auto button here, which plays the selected transition over the selected duration. As you would expect, you can accomplish all these tasks via keyboard shortcuts. Graphics have their own controls up here. To take the picture-in-picture in, picture in GFX1 Live, I'll click this. To take the bug in GFX2 Live, I'll click this. And obviously I click it again to remove the overlay. I can record up to four isolation tracks, or ISO tracks, in this control. This could include the program feed, Dirty, which is the final mix feed with all graphics and overlays. The program stream, Clean, is the same mix feed without the overlay graphics like bugs which is useful when you want a pristine version of the mix for later editing. You can also record up to two camera inputs in their original form. Just choose the ISO streams and click the record button up here to start recording. You can stream to both old and new live stream accounts. Endpoint your live stream to any RTMP compatible streaming server with presets for YouTube Live and Ustream. New is the ability to send adaptive streams to a CDN and to import XML files from Flash Media Live Encoder to set specific configuration and connection options. Just configure your streams and click Stream here to start streaming. OK, that's the overview. You can read a lot more about the new features in Studio in my review on Streaming Media Producer. I'm Jan Ozer. Thanks for watching.